to begin our discussion of public opinion, we have to come up with a usable, workable definition of what public opinion is. And there are a variety of different definitions that we find for public opinion. For example, one definition is the aggregation of people's views about issues, situations, and public figures. Basically what that means is how do all of the people feel about a particular issue, situation, or public figure. And this definition would be usable and very, very useful if we were, you know, maybe in a communications class or we were in a marketing class. Because when we look at this definition, it talks about generic situations. For example, if I was to ask a question of the general population, does Britney Spears have any talent? The people would definitely have a response the public would definitely have a response, and I went online and found a blog that was talking about this very issue, and here was their response. Two different people felt differently about it. So the public is definitely, at least some of the public, is talking about whether Britney Spears have any, has any talent or not. And if I'm taking a marketing class or I'm taking, like I said, a communications class, this could be an example where we could discuss the public opinion of Britney Spears and her talent. But for this class, that definition isn't going to work. When we're looking at public opinion in this class, we're using a different definition. And the definition that we use says that public opinion are those opinions held by private persons which government finds it prudent to heed. Or we could use the definition that says public opinion is the collective political beliefs and attitudes of the public or groups within the public on matters of relevance to the government. In this class, we're going to use those types of definitions of public opinion. What do those two definitions of public opinion have in common? Well, they both deal with government. For this class, what we're going to be talking about when we deal with public opinion, we're going to be talking about the issues that the general population cares about that the government also cares about. And let's think about this. What issues does the government find it prudent to heed? What issues does the government find to be relevant? A well, very easy answer to that, it's the issues that the public think government should be spending their tax dollars dealing with. In other words, the government defines public opinion by saying, Public opinion are the issues that the general population is talking about that relates to what they think government should or should not be doing. Now, let me give you a couple of examples. Are the Yankees the greatest sports team of all time? That's a question we could ask the general public. But their answers would probably not be a public opinion issue for this class. Because is the government really involved in determining who the greatest sports team of all times is? What would you say if the Congress was spending money to determine who the greatest sports team of all time was? You would not be very happy with. But is the issue of whether or not Roger Clemens used steroids during his baseball career a public opinion issue? And I would say that that issue is, or at least was at one point, a public opinion issue. And why is that? That's because Roger Clemens using steroids deals with a larger issue within our society, the use of illegal substances. And when Roger Clemens and other sports figures and, and role models started using steroids, who started talking about it? The parents started talking about it because now my high school kid's using steroids and my high school kid is getting sick or my high school kid is dying. So this issue that maybe on the surface appears to be a sports-only issue becomes an issue that the public begins to care about because it starts to impact the public and their families. And now the public tells the government, we want you to get involved in addressing this issue of steroid use or performance enhancing drug use in sports. So you can very clearly have issues that appear to be sports related or entertainment related that the public doesn't want the government to deal with. But then there are other issues that are sports or entertainment related that the government is expected to be involved in. Now that we have somewhat of an idea of what public opinion is, at least for this class, let's take a little bit closer look at a public opinion. And the two questions I want to address right now is, why is public opinion important to the government? And why is public opinion important to you or I?
the first thing that we need to realize is that the government is made up of elected and appointed officials. And if we look at elected officials, we'll notice that candidates need votes to get elected. And what is a easier way for a candidate to get my vote? To be working on issues that I care about. For example, if I'm a mother and my issue is drinking and driving, and all of my local representatives and my members of Congress are all off working on some other issue like steroids in baseball or, you know, a constitutional amendment to guarantee members of Congress pay raises, things like that that I don't think are important. When it comes time for me to vote, I'm not going to vote for them. So when elected officials are looking at public opinion, Part of the reason that they're looking at public opinion is because they want to get a, 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 a sample of how the, the population is feeling about certain issues so that they know which issues to be working on and which ones not to be working on. Now, if we have a government official that is strictly looking at the public opinion polls to decide what issues they're working on solely, then our government official is not doing what we elected him or her to do. But on the other hand, if those public officials are not working on any of the issues that we think are important, then they're going to have a very hard time getting reelected. And we will see that when these government officials try to study public opinion, they spend sometimes lots of money in trying to figure out what public opinion is. Because we will find out as we go through this, this video that public opinion is not this nice, packaged box that you can call up, you know, the public opinion office and have them deliver it to you. Public opinion has some some characteristics and public opinion has some ways of of acting that makes it difficult sometimes for members of the government to get their mind around it. So public opinion is very important to government officials, both elected and unelected. Because if you've got an unelected official who doesn't need to be elected, they still care about public opinion because our unelected government officials, those bureaucrats that we call them, are greatly affected by the elected government officials who decide what their budget is and what uh, laws are going to be passed and things like that. So if I'm an unelected government official, I care about public opinion also because if my agency that I'm in charge of is dealing with issues that the public doesn't care about, public is going to be talking to their elected officials who decide what the budget for those unelected government agencies are going to be. And if I'm, a, if I'm in charge of it, an agency and I'm not doing what the public wants, the elected officials is very going to quickly going to tell me by cutting my budget or by changing what I'm allowed to do that, hey, you're not responding properly to public opinion. So public opinion is important to both elected government officials and unelected government officials. Now, the other question I have for you is why is public opinion important to you? Most of you out there probably don't really think much about public opinion. You don't think about what other people care about certain issues um, because you have your own opinion, and, and that's the one that most of us think is most important. But if we don't share our public opinion, if we don't become aware of what the public opinion is for the rest of the country, then we're going to have a very difficult time impacting our government, both the elected officials and the bureaucrats. Because if I am the average American, and I don't care about public opinion, I don't express my opinion in public, I don't respond to surveys, I don't do those types of things, if I act that way, my government's going to realize that they don't have to listen to me. And if we as a society as a whole start letting the government do what they want without responding to what they do, then, then the government is going to start spending less time caring about our public opinion. We ourselves in this country don't get to vote for specific policies. We get to vote for the people who make the policies or pass the laws. So if we simply just sit back and let government officials do whatever they want, we have even less 
impact on the decision that our government makes. So we as Americans need to express our opinion. We need to complete the surveys that come through when our elected officials send us a survey or if, if, if some polling agency calls us. Because if all of us said we're not going to do that, it's a waste of time, we're not going to do anything, then our government would not be nearly as responsive to us as they are. And a lot of people believe that our government is not responsive to the American people. And if that's an opinion you have, it could be a legitimate one, but just imagine how much less responsive the government would be to the general population if we as the general population just stopped responding to public opinion surveys or stopped making our public opinion heard. And we're going to talk over the next couple of minutes about how we as Americans can express our public opinion, where our public opinion comes from. Where do we get our opinion? Where do I decide if I'm going to be pro-life or pro-choice? How do I demonstrate to the elected officials how I feel about certain issues? We're going to talk all about all of those things over the next couple of videos and the next couple of chapters. So hopefully now you have some idea that we're studying in this, this in this class because each one of you out there is going to someday at some point in your life have an issue that's important enough to you personally that you would like the government to respond to it. And you need to understand why the government cares about what you say and why you should care about what the public feels about certain issues and how you can impact public opinion yourself. And when we look at public opinion, we need to realize that public opinion is actually made up of a whole bunch of individual opinions. So when we look at how America feels about abortion, or same-sex marriage, or the death penalty, or any of those issues, you got to realize that the American belief on that is made up of a whole variety of individual beliefs and opinions. So as my opinions change, as my opinions are affected by other things, so is public opinion. It's really important that we take a look at what types of things in the world impact what I believe. Because while those things impact what I believe, it's going to impact public opinion as well. And the first thing on the list that you see on the screen is that the process of socialization greatly impacts what we're going to believe. How are we raised, basically, or what we're saying there? Your textbook talks about the fact that there are a number of things that impact what I believe and how I believe and how I act. And some of the things are things like what events are going on in the world while I'm being raised? What kind of wars are there? What kind of natural disasters are there? What kind of social movements are going on? All of those things impact the way I am raised. And we could be raised in the same exact household, but if I experience one set of personal experiences, and then you come along after me at a different time period, and you experience a whole different set of you know, experiences, then our public opinion is going to be different. Other things that impact our beliefs are self-interest. I can say that I am opposed to big government. But when there's a situation that comes up in my life that big government could help me, then I may be more likely to change what I believe in a certain area. And I can say, well, this is a special situation. My education impacts what I believe. And another source of um, public opinion or another group of people that impact what I believe is, of course, the media. The media is constantly you know, trying to explain to us what's going on in Washington. The media is constantly trying to explain to us how different processes work. We've got 24-hour news now, and when the Senate is going through a filibuster, or they're fast-tracking a piece of legislation. Those are all terms that most of us Americans aren't really familiar with. But the media will try and educate us quickly in a, in a two-minute segment or in a 45-second you know, segment about what those things are. And if I'm the type of person who has got CNN or Fox or MSN on frequently, first of all, I believe that it's important to watch that because I think 
being informed makes it easier for me to impact the process. Media has a huge impact on we, what we as Americans believe. Now, the last thing that's not on that list is family. Family is the one source of public opinion that has the greatest impact on us. All research shows that it is our family that most influences what we're going to believe. And the primary reason for that is because we're with our families so much. And the United Way of America has this program called Success by Six. And what Success by Six is, it's, it's a program that's designed to try and get schools and families and communities to work with young children in reading and cognitive skills and things like that because all of the medical research, all of the scientific research shows us that most of our brain is developed by the age of six. And that's important to this discussion about public opinion because we realize, or we should realize, that who do most of us spend most of our time with between the age of birth and six? It's our family. Now, when we turn seven and eight and nine and ten and we're in school, then we start to spend more time with our school and with our peers and with the teachers and those kind of things. But up to that age of six, when they say most of our brain development takes place, we're spending most of our time with our family. So most of us don't like to realize this, but if we look at ourselves, you know, 25 years from now, we're going to look an awful lot like our mom or our dad or our grandfather or other members of our family. And I don't mean physically. I mean in our beliefs. We as young people may say, oh, I don't want to be like my mom or I don't want to be like my dad. But we'll find out that we start to get older. We really are more like our parents than we like to admit it because the family is a huge, huge agent of socialization. All of these things together impact how we believe or what we believe. As we get older, our opinions change. Because when we're older, we have more to lose if the government makes a bad decision. When we're younger, we can be kind of cavalier and, and frivolous in how we believe about certain issues. But as we get older, we change. It's part of the process of developing our beliefs. Real quickly, I'll give you an example. For most of my life, I was a somewhat economically liberal person. Taxes weren't a huge issue for me. And the reason was because for most of my life, I didn't make a whole lot of money. I didn't own a home. I didn't pay a whole lot of taxes. Most of the taxes I paid, I got back. Now that I've got a halfway decent job and my salary is decent, I'm paying more taxes. The past couple of years, I haven't been getting income tax returns. What do I say? I start to be more conservative in my approach to the decisions that the government makes about taxes and, and, and things of that nature. My public opinion or my opinion about things have changed because I've aged. So all of these things impact what we believe. And some of these cha things change rapidly. Just imagine if you're an elected official and you're trying to figure out what public opinion is about a certain issue. And you realize that that public opinion is made up of millions of individual opinions, which can change rapidly. Your life as a public official can be very problematic or it can be very um, uneasy because public opinion changes so often. 